Back in May 11th of 2015, a Kickstarter pitch was released. Headed by former producer of the Castlevania game, starting with Symphony of the Night, Koji Igadashi desired the freedom to make the kind of game he wanted and sought out a publisher to help with the funding. After much searching, he found one that would, Deep Silver, who had published games such as the Dead Island and Risen series, but he had to prove that there was enough interest in the game. Koji Igadashi presents his pitch in a video of him. He explains the need for the community's support before the publisher would contribute funding. <laughs> I like the part where he throws the glass. What is a man? A miserable little pile of secrets! Iga, as he is commonly called, is most famous for his contributions to Castlevania Symphony of the Night, which came out on PlayStation on March 20th of 1997 in Japan and in Europe and North America months later. He was the co-director and was involved in the design, some programming, and script. After that, he went on to produce 13 more Castlevania games on various platforms. At the Tokyo Game Show on October 9th of 2008, Iga released footage that appeared to be Alucard, hinting that it might be a sequel to Castlevania Symphony of the Night. However, it was scrapped in favor of a reboot to the franchise, Lords of Shadow, headed by a different developer, Mercury Steam. Lords of Shadow was first debuted at the Konami Games convention two months earlier, on August 20th of 2008. after the Castlevania series got passed on to them, and then seeing the success of Keiji Inufune's Mighty No. 9's Kickstarter on October 1st of 2013, Koji Igadashi decided to go independent, and so left Konami back in March 15th of 2014 after working there for over 20 years. When I first heard that Iga was planning to gain funds on Kickstarter to produce the game, I got excited. A spiritual successor to Castlevania was something I could easily get behind. Plus, sticking it to Konami for their bizarre decisions in the gaming industry was a bonus, so making a pledge was a no-brainer. Gamers went wild when the Kickstarter reached over $5.5 million on June 12th of 2015. At the time, the most funded video game ever raised through Kickstarter, before being beaten by Shinmu 3 a month later, on July 17th of 2015, Bloodstain is being developed by NT Creates, well known for developing the Mega Man Zero franchise. They released a game very similar to it called Azure Striker Gunvolt on the 3DS in August of 2014 and a Steam version a year later. The story in Bloodstain is that Miriam was used as a host for a curse that left her infused with magi crystals to have slowly spread across her whole body. The markings on her are surrounded by glyphs that prevent the curse from spreading. You have to fight through a castle created by Jibo, who was also cursed, but whose infliction is at a more advanced stage. Back in June 23rd, I received my Steam key for the Bloodstain demo. The demo was provided to those who pledged at the $60 tier or above. For an early demo, it ran quite well, though initially I did run into a small problem. Oh no, fatal error. Okay, they, they did mention about the fatal error. How do you fix that? No! <laughs> I want to play. Come on. Make it work. Yeah, how do you fix the fatal error crash? Let's try this again. Hopefully it doesn't crash. Press any button, game start, please don't crash, please don't crash. There we go. Being a Metroidvania type game, there are things you will expect. Huge maps to explore. New skills to use. Different types of enemies to fight. And the loot. 
Miriam gains different abilities by impaling herself with shards that drop from enemies, each with a different drop percentage. These include Cerulean Splash, Fire Cannon, Head Flail, a Con Booster, and Cast Amy, which has the lowest drop chance with a reported 1% drop rate. Two other characters are in the game. Johannes, an alchemist, was a friend of Jibil and has used his knowledge on alchemy to prevent Miriam's curse from getting worse. And Zangetsu, who fought demons for years before the start of the game. He lost his left eye and right arm and uses a prosthetic made out of wood and an Ofuda spell to give it movement. Bloodstain will also comprise the special skills that Miriam can use. In one of the updates, four skills were revealed. There will also be familiars. Pictures of four of them were released, but only one will be used in the final game. Personally, I voted for the fourth one, but had hoped that all could be used. I thought the graphics were pretty good. In a past update, they allowed backers to choose between a set of shaders. Not gonna lie, I wasn't really a fan of either of them, but was happy that a third shader was released and was chosen later for the game. I did see comments about people disappointed that they went with 2.5D instead of sprite-based 2D, but Iga said that it was necessary. For the size of the game that they are intending to make, they wouldn't be able to find enough pixel artists for the budget that was available. The enemy types included in the demo are the Moto, Sima, the Boer, Moto Cannon, Dola Hammer, and the Amy. Iga is basing most of the enemies on demons from a book on demonology called The Lesser Key of Solomon. The music in the game was pretty good. It's going to be composed by the same person who made the music in Symphony of the Night, Michiru Yamane. There will also be music done by Ippo Yamada, who worked on music from various Mega Man games. At the time of this video, you can still pledge on the Kickstarter for Bloodstain. If you are a fan of Castlevania, Bloodstain should easily be something to consider playing in the future. I felt the demo was quite good for such an early build, and Iga seems to be extremely passionate about his project. Recently, he personally said he needed to delay it. I'm okay with that. It at least seems to be progressing better than a previously Kickstarted game.